Krishna, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. You, you're all going back over there, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Hmm. Verse number six. <clears throat> Yesam loka imam praja. Okay. Manasayap satam purve. Chakvar manavastata. Madhbhava manasajata. Esam loka iman prajaha maha risaya. The great sages, sapta, seven, purve, before, chakvara, chakvara, four, manava, Manas, M Manus, Manus. Tata, also. Madhbhava, born of me. Manasa, from the mind. Jata, born. Yesam, of them. Loke in the world. Ima, all this. Prajaha, population. Translation, the seven great sages before them, the four other great sages and the Manus, progenitors of mankind, come from me, born from my mind and all living beings, populating the various places, descend from them. Hmm. 
report. The Lord is giving a genealogical table synopsis of the universal population. Brahma is the original creature born of the energy of the Supreme Lord who is known as Saranyagarbha. And for Brahma, all the seven great sages and before them four other great sages named Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatana, Sanatkumar and the Manus are manifested. All these 25 great sages are known as the patriarchs of the living entities all over the universe. There are innumerable universes and numerable planets within each universe, and each planet is full of population of different varieties. All of them are born of these 25 patriarchs. Brahma underwent penance for 1,000 years of the demigods before he realized, by the grace of Krishna, how to create. Then from Brahma came Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatana, and Sanatkumara, then Rudra, and then the seven sages. In this way, all the Brahmas and Kshatriyas are born out of the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahma is known as Pitamaha, the grandfather, and Krishna is known as Prabhitamaha, the father of the grandfather. That is stated in the 11th canto of the Bhagavad Gita, Verse number 39. Sri Chaitanya Vranavistam Stapitam Yena Mutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Devananta Swami Dinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pacharine Near Vishesa Sunyavari Paschat Yade Satarine So the Lord is describing his opulences by describing how the creation unfolds. Mm -hmm. From Brahma comes the four Kumaras and the sages, and then Lord Rudra, the four, and then from Lord Brahma's body comes the progenitors. From the progenitors, they populate the universe in different ways. So the source of creation is Krishna, but he is empowering. He doesn't do it directly, he does it through his agency where Lord Brahma is the principal proponent of that formula. <laughs> so Brahma meditated for 1,000 celestial years and after that meditation he became enlightened in the truth of all Vedic knowledge and he understood the Lord, he understood himself, and he understood what was his service to the Lord. All this was revealed to Brahma through his meditation for 1,000 years on the personality of Godhead within his heart. Mm -hmm. And then after understanding his service, he began the work of creation. And uh, therefore Brahma is called Pitamaha, he is called the grandfather. The father is Manu, because from Brahma, the Manus come, and the Manus are um, the authors of how society conducts itself. In other words, Manu gives the law books of society. So in those law books, all the formulas for how to live life in this world and to ultimately practice the goal of life is explained. And they, there are 71 Manus in a day of Brahma and altogether in a lifetime of Brahma there's about 5,040 Manus. And so these, uh, they are called the father of mankind Brahma's the grandfather, and Krishna here is called Prati 
Pratita Maha. Prapita Maha. He is the grandfather or the father of the grandfather. Sometimes we say great grandfather, but in this case, father of the grandfather. So he is the source of everything. So this is what this particular section is trying to give us, an understanding of how everything unfolds from one source, and that source is Ishwara Parma Krishna. Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Nadir Govinda Sarvanakara Nakarna. So from the Lord, everything unfolds nicely through the different agencies. It's not like what the modern scientists say. There was some gas floating in the atmosphere and due to the uh, coagulating and the interaction of these different gases, there was a explosion and from the explosion, different uh, elements were produced and then these elements combined and from these elements combined and now we have creation. Wonderful idea. Not really. It's it's the most stupidest thing you've ever heard of because it makes no sense. <laughs> it's completely senseless. And they'll say anything not to give credit to the Lord or not to give. Um, their analogy is like, say you come to me and you say, can you build me a house? I say, yeah. Give me all the ingredients. And so you bring the boards, the glass for the windows, and whatever other materials needed. And uh, all the ingredients for building a house, you put them in one big pile, and then you throw the tools on top of the pile. And then you take dynamite, and you explode the dynamite, and then all of a sudden you have your house. <laughs> Wonderful theory. <laughs> So only, not even a child will believe that, <laughs> to speak about some, someone who has some intelligence. So this is their, their speculation on the absolute truth. They don't know, know exactly anything, so they just... But here we have a systematic and clear understanding of how creation unfolds. And you'll see everything is personal. Everything is personal. From Brahma, from Krishna comes Brahma, from Brahma comes the uh, four Kumaras, and then Rudra, the patriarchs, and then gradually the different progenitors, and from the progenitors unfolds, and then we have them producing the, or creating, not creating, but manifesting the next millennium as the living entities reappear after their long sleep into the body of the of Mahavishnu. So this is all systematic here. And so this is what this particular purport is about, to give us a pretty systematic understanding about Ete Cham Sam Kalam Pum Sam Krishna's two Bhagavan Svayam. Um, it's we can speak, we can say, oh, Krishna is the source of everything, everything comes from Krishna. But how, and how he manifests that is really a great mystery. Because it is so intricately done that it requires a huge intelligence in order to facilitate that. And it's like, wherever you see some systematic order, Working, say you see a corporation is working in a systematic way and people are doing their work and there's an interaction and the, co the company is also reaching out to the public. So you see behind this whole operation there is some intelligence, some brains, some organization that makes it happen. So therefore we have to conclude simply by ordinary common logic that this huge manifestation of creation behind it there is a huge brain who's making it all happen how it and how it happens is we we learn from this uh, 
from Bhagavad Gita, how it all ultimately unfolds from person to person to person to person. So it's all systematic, it's all nicely arranged. And Brahma has a big job. Brahma is the... Um, he has to create the bodies of the living entities out of the material energy given to him by Krishna. So these bodies, which are 8,400,000 species of life, are actually put into activity according to their previous karma, which makes everything happen systematically. So this is Krishna's... You, you cannot... In Brahma Samhita, very systematically, and even in detail, explains how the uh, whole creation unfolds from basic all the way up to the most complex system of organizations. So behind that is a, a brain, and that's Krishna. He's not only creating the system, but he creates the people who make the system work. He creates the intelligence by which the people who work within the system are working. And he is also giving the results of the activities of those who perform the activities within the system. So Krishna is in every aspect of existence, both material and spiritual. He is the ultimate principle of everything that happens. Sometimes he's cons considered, he said, they say he's the beginning, middle, and end of everything. So that's Krishna. So everything has an element of Krishna's energy or Krishna's uh, arrangement within it. So uh, Prabhupada would say, you cannot imagine how intelligent Krishna is. <laughs> it's not possible. And he can, he can monitor, he, can, he knows everything that's going on everywhere in all of existence, both material and spiritual both directly and indirectly. Indirectly, we say through his energies, and directly through his own personal contact. <laughs> For a devotee in Krishna consciousness, he is orchestrating the life of the devotee directly. For the non-devotee, he works through his energies primarily the material energy. And according to how they connect with that material energy, they uh, get a particular result from that activity, which is provided to them through that, that energy, either goodness, passion, or ignorance. But it's all planned by Krishna. So does Krishna know everything? Yes, but he is not always, um, yeah, he, because he puts in place the himself in the form of his energies, which are two, the all-pervading spiritual effulgence and the, uh, the uh, super soul, which is sitting in the hearts of all living entities. So that's how God knows everything about you because he's sitting in your heart. And Paramatma is just another feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's the second highest feature. The highest feature is the Bhagavan feature of Krishna in his personal form. But he is called Antaryama, the indwelling uh, personality within the hearts of all living entities. So in that way he knows everything. And by his Brahman effulgence, which he pervades all of creation, he is everywhere by that at the same time. So when you know that there's nothing outside of Krishna, <laughs> nothing, and there is Krishna and then there's nothing. <laughs> That's all. 
So we usually say it's Krishna and Krishna's energy, but Krishna's energy is coming from Krishna, and that energy is working under his control. So ultimately, everything is connected to Krishna directly or indirectly. So when you know that, you have no choice. You have to engage in devotional service. There's no other, uh, what we say, recourse but to accept devotional service. Because there's nothing else. <laughs> you can engage in service of the external energy, which is the Maya energy, which is this material energy. And when you do that, you are you're serving Krishna through his agency called material energy, or we call the Maya energy, like that, yoga, uh, Maha Maya. So you're serving Krishna indirectly in that sense, but the benefit you get from that is that you simply have to continue to serve the material energy until you realize that you are different than the material energy, and then finally, after so many births, you come in contact with a spiritual master. When you come in contact with the spiritual master, then you engage in your occupational duty. And yeah, that means you actually start to serve the Lord through the agency of the spiritual master. Before you're serving the Lord through the agency of the material energy, but it's indirect service. But still, because it's, in, because it's his energy, you're serving him through serving the material energy. So the non-devotees are serving, just like we might use the example that Prabhupada uses. It's a nice example. He says you live in a particular country. And so if you follow the laws of the country, you get all the benefits that the, that the state and the government will give you. But if you break the law, then you have, you have to get punished and you wind up in prison. So in prison is also part of the country. But you're not serving the country directly, you're serving the country indirectly in the form of accepting the punishment of prison. But because the prison is authorized and created by the state, you're serving the state by through your presence in prison. So we're serving the material energy, which is Krishna's energy, indirectly, which is his, what we say, his uh, entangling energy. Living entity gets entangled in the complex networks of the material modes, which are goodness, passion, and ignorance, which are always binding the material entity, the living entity to struggle. Meche maira vase, kacho ha bu 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 bai. Jeep Krishna Dase Vishwash Kolira Dukanai that life after 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 life millions of lifetimes in this material world simply battling with the three modes of material nature. That's all. Until you actually take up devotional service. So this will go on. You become servant of the Lord by serving his external energy in the form of Maya. Mm -hmm. Maya becomes the master and therefore she simply gives you trouble, that's all. Mm -hmm. Until you wake up and come to your consciousness as a devotee and then you engage in devotional service. So the point we're trying to illustrate is that everyone is serving Krishna, either directly in devotional service or indirectly through his material energy. Because both energies, uh, what is the next verse? So in these two verses, Krishna sums up everything. He is the source of both energies, spiritual and material. So we, the living entities, we are spiritual, but we are connected to the material energy, and therefore we think we are material. We think we have a body, 
we think we are the body that we have. We identify with that body as being us. And therefore we function in the material energy according to the identities we accept. <laughs> and the roles that those identities give us. <laughs> And therefore, we stay entangled in this material energy, amidst my life after life after life, and there's no end to that until one f becomes fortunate and comes in contact with the bona fide spiritual master. And if they're, they can recognize that here's a chance to get out of this entanglement, uh, which is there for many billions of years, millions of lifetimes and billions of years, we finally decide that, well, I'm tired of getting beaten up by this material energy. And so we take to Krishna consciousness. Now we serve the Lord under his Daivi Shakti, or his uh, Parapakriti, which is the spiritual energy, which brings one in association with Krishna as a person. Before we are associating with him, through his energy, just like as the prison house is run as a representative of the state, the, per the prisoners are serving the prison house who are representatives of the state. But they don't get to serve the state, but they do it indirectly by being in the prison. So this material world is compared to a prison house. So life after life after life, we have to stay in the prison until we actually reach the point of giving up all of our desires to try to be happy in this world and take to the process of devotional service. In that process of devotional service, susukam kartava um, yasmin, what is that, brahma sukam twanantam, that 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 happiness that comes from devotional service is is the real happiness of the living entity's existence. Material happiness is explained as being one step better than material suffering. If you're suffering and you somehow stop your suffering in material life, you identify that with, as some kind of happiness. So just like if you're hungry, and you're feeling the pains of hunger, that's some kind of suffering. So you eat, and that counteracts the pains, and you feel satisfied. So that happiness you get from eating, what is it? A counteracting of the pains of hunger, that's all. So all material happiness is simply a counteracting of the suffering that we get from material life, that's all. But real happiness is situated within the soul, and it's there eternally. It has to be uncovered when we connect with, an, with our true nature, Krishna, in devotional service. So, therefore, no one can, as Krishna says, yeyatam mam prapadyante tam stataiva bhajami aham mama vartmanam vartante manusya partha sarva uh, Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pritha. Uh, so everyone is everyone is serving God. <laughs> everyone, except some are serving Him indirectly, and some are serving directly. But because He's everything, you can't fly. You're not. No one is outside of His control, outside of His energies. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is what is being said here, that everything is, everything is created by, maintained by, and ultimately propagated by Krishna <laughs> through his different energies like that. So when you know that, and this, is, this knowledge is important, when you know that, you have one thing, only one thing to do, surrender to Krishna. <laughs> That's all. When you know that, until you reach that point, you will not surrender. You have your own ideas what you should do in life like that, and therefore we stay we stay entangled in the material energy, life after life, getting another body. Sometimes we get a body that is nice, and sometimes we get a body that is not nice, and sometimes we may also get a body that's in a lower species of life. 
So we, we can't choose what body we will get in our next life. That's given to us, karma, daiva, natrina. The material energy gives that body accordingly. You have nothing to say. Of course, you're putting in your petition for the body that you want simply by your activities in this life. If you're engaged in devotional service, your spiritual body is formulating and when you reach perfection, you die and you attain your spiritual body, no more material body. But if you still have material consciousness, and then when you, you're formulating your activities in this world and you're, you're developing a certain type of material consciousness, then you'll get that body in the next life. So you're telling material energy, oh, well, I want this kind of body because I'm doing this kind of activities. You might not be saying that, but by your activities, you're showing what kind of body you want. <laughs> and then maya, or the material energy, working under Krishna's control will give you that body exactly accordingly, according to your manifested karma at the time of death. <laughs> so it's a very systematic system of existence like that. So look in the mirror and see what kind of body you have, and you'll think, hmm, this is what I asked for. <laughs> you might like it you might not <laughs> but this is what you get it's not it's not like it's a random thing you know like krishna just puts all the bodies in this big basket and he stirs it around and he picks out a number oh okay we'll give uh uh you know uros this body we'll give uh, you know, uh, Shasha, this body, <laughs> we'll give this body to, no, that's not a good one, we'll try another one, all right, this one's it. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like some jackpot, <laughs> hoping that Krishna gives me a good body. No, you're actually picking, you're actually choosing it as you live your life now. Your consciousness is formulating that body right now day by day as you perform your activities. Your activities are motivated by your desires and your desires formulate those, those bodies that you'll eventually receive. So if you reach a stage of pure devotional service, then you attain your eternal spiritual body. So that's Krishna consciousness. Where's Ananta? Oh, I told him I would show a video tonight, but I was thinking... Is he there? Oh, okay. I have a little quick video. No, he's not there. He's probably tired from Sankraton. Anyway, we this this is a nice 10-minute video. It's about Sankraton. So I thought I'd play it. Before we do that, any comments or questions? Okay. Uh, can somebody r run this thing? I have a particular video you want to. Can you can you do it? I have a stick, um, and on the last. There's a listing of different, there's about five different things on the stick. The last one says HTTP. You know, the, it's kind of like, it's the beginning of a, a link. If you could plug that in, we can watch this exciting video. Any questions? So, Maharaj, this, <clears throat> there's one question. Um, uh, let's see. Bhakti uh, Vatsal, call, call uh, Ananta, tell him, because I told him I would show this video tonight, so he was excited. Maybe he forgot. Ask him to come and see the video. If he doesn't come, then tell him, I'll come and get him myself. <laughs> <laughs> so What's the question? The Can question you is Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Please accept my humble obeisances, Hare Krishna Sahotra, Vanachari in one of his seminars said, Madhvacharya's philosophy, he says that 
Brahma Loka, the planet of Brahma in this material universe is on the Ananda Maya platform, but it is within the material world. So the question, is this also Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta? Hmm. Well, Suhotra Maharaj said this. <laughs> it says Suhotra Vanachari. Hmm. Well, there was, we used to have a devotee in our group, in our, his name is Suhotra Maharaj. You know him. He yes. Was here. Yes. Um, so the question is: Is Brahma Loka in this universe? Yes. Is on, on the Ananda Maya platform. Ananda Maya. Mm. Which means? And then he said that, but it is within the material world. So, is Ananda Maya platform in this material world also? Ananda Maya. I'm not sure what the term refers to in Ananda Maya. Hmm. Um, well, even even Krishna has a planet within this material universe known as Sweta Dweep. It's a, actually it's an island. It's the pole star, Druva, Druva Loka, actually. So Brahma's planet is within the material realm, yeah. It even says that if Brahma is a pure devotee, then at the end of his lifetime he goes back home to... Otherwise he stays in the material world. So Brahma's planet is in the material world. It's not in in between the material world and the spiritual world, or it's not in the spiritual world. It's in the material world, but it's the highest planet in the material world. This, the second question is also... Krishna is Svarat. Independent Swarat. Yeah. Swarat. Yeah. Does that mean that he also knows all things independently from the jivas and his expansions? He knows everything at all times, all places. If he wants to, he simply connects with that energy and he knows everything. He's conscious of everything directly and indirectly. So indirectly means through his energies and directly means directly. There's nothing outside of his awareness. Whatever he wants to know, he simply goes and thinks in that direction and then that knowledge becomes available to him. Krishna doesn't have to do anything. He simply just refers to where, what he wants to know and then that knowledge is available. No one can accommodate or even understand Krishna's brain. It's, it's way beyond our ability. The last one, HPP. It's a YouTube video, actually, so it's on YouTube, too. H, that's it, HTTP. You see it there? Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Now time for Friday night at the movies. Can you play it? Let's see. Shaila Prabhupada Keep.